Next on Blister News tonight, as a trade war escalates with China, stocks drop in the United States, what this could mean for your financial future. Plus, Senator Harriet Chandler is recognized for her support for Recreation Worcester. The free year-round program serves nearly 2,000 kids in the city. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Olivia Lemon. The humid air returned today and there is a chance for rain tomorrow, but it shouldn't have an effect on your morning commute. Let's get a first look at our local forecast for more. Hey, good evening to you, meteorologist Pamela Gardner. Yes, we did have a couple of areas with fog this morning. The fog lifted and then we had partly cloudy skies and mostly sunny skies across northern parts of Worcester County. Well, for this evening, we're going to slowly see the fog redevelop as our humidity levels are rather high and we start to cool off the temperature near dew point. To the south and to the east, still some lingering shower chances across Cape Cod and the islands as well as a couple sprinkles. But then we all dry off overnight tonight and this is where we start to see the fog really rolling in after 11 o'clock after midnight tonight and a tropical air mass will stay in place. So a muggy night ahead with areas of fog, otherwise partly cloudy, 67 degrees for the low in Worcester and tomorrow will be right around 80 degrees with a chance for a thunderstorm, especially late in the afternoon. The wind from the south southwest, the humidity combined with the chance of lots of sunshine will help to trigger some instability and support some heavy rainfall potential. We'll go through the hour by hour timing with the storms for Wednesday in just a few minutes. All right, thank you, Pamela. Worcester and state police investigate what was believed to be a suspicious item in the city. They say someone called in to report a mechanical item in a backpack near Kenmore Diner in Worcester. The state's bomb squad investigated in the area of Grafton and Water Street. Officers shut down several roads and went door to door to notify residents in the area. People who were evacuated say it was a scary situation. The police officers like commotion for me to get out of the vehicle and they kept telling me to run towards them and to quickly, you know, move out of the way of danger and so I notified my coworkers in the building and told them to evacuate. I didn't know if it was a fire, I didn't know if it was a shooter, I didn't know if it was a bomb. I would prefer to be safe than on fire. It's like I was I wanted to be frustrated at the cops as I was uh, proceeded to get from roadblock to roadblock. Uh, but when they told me that it was for my safety, I was like Fair enough. Do your job. Keep me safe. And police say the mechanical item in the bag was not an explosive or anything dangerous. Stocks rebounded this morning after the single worst drop for the market this year, Monday. Financial experts say while it may seem alarming for investors, it's not anything worth major concern. They say the trade war with China is to blame for the drop. Barbara Brittany Schaefer joins us live now in Worcester to explain. Brittany. Olivia, the drop happening after the Chinese government decided to drop the value of their currency. Car Financial Group says it's impossible to predict the stock market, but says people shouldn't worry yet. The Dow Jones Industrial Average drops close to 800 points Monday, marking the single worst day for the stock market this year. I think investors were uh, surprised by the, uh, the size of the drop. However, the tension uh, in the trade negotiations has only been ramping up. Stocks falling as the trade war between China and United States heats up. Monday, China's currency sank to an 11 year low compared to the US dollar. Carr Financial Group President Richard Carr says the drop is alarming, but nothing to worry about. Almost everybody's portfolio includes some investment in stocks, particularly US stocks. And as a result, yesterday was unnerving for most investors. But in the long run and in the bigger picture, it was a, a, a small event. Gary G says his 401k isn't focused on the long run as he retired a few months ago. He says he's fortunate he cashed out before this drop, but knows the hardship of losing money in the market. Same thing happened to me back in 2009 when it crashed and all. I basically my at that time was wiped out my 401k. Basically, I mean, not completely, and it took a long time. It took 10 years, basically, to rebuild it. Uh, and so, fortunately, I was in, the, in that big rise when Trump initially came in, when the stock market uh, took off quite a bit. I'm personally not very worried uh, about the drop in the market. Uh, I think it's just a, 
a momentary blip on the radar and everything's going to be okay. Carr says to avoid investing in U.S. products because they are now more expensive to millions of Chinese consumers. He also says the worst mistake is for investors to make a rash decision. Especially one that affects maybe your entire allocation is a mistake and historically we can actually point that out uh, for folks that um, making wholesale changes to your allocation is never a good idea but rebalancing will help you earn a better rate of return over time. As for Tuesday the stock market rebounded with the Dow up 312 points. Live in Worcester, Brittany Schaefer, Worcester News Tonight. State police are investigating a fatal crash on Route 290 in Marlboro. Police say it appears a car rear-ended a Connecticut man's vehicle, causing it to enter the median and roll over. They've identified the victim as 55-year-old Lee Johnson. Two of his passengers, a 22-year-old female and a 14-year-old male, were brought to the hospital for minor injuries. The cause of the crash is under investigation. A Shrewsbury man is ordered to pay $480,000 and to stop operating a pet shop. The Attorney General's office says Heath Moore sold dozens of sick puppies out of his home. Attorney General Maura Healy says he knew he was selling people sick and sometimes dying puppies. Healy filed a lawsuit against Morse and his six businesses in November 2018. She says more than a quarter of the puppies sold died, many within a few days of purchase. Worcester is once again offering a free program for kids. Recreation Worcester includes athletics, arts, and academic programming. Leaders say without state funding, it wouldn't be possible. As our Erin Keating explains, today Senator Harriet Chandler was recognized for her work in the program. Summer is in full swing for kids at Recreation Worcester. And new funding from the state ensures there is plenty for them to do. The kids here uh, are, have everything from learning skills to having some leadership training and it's really good and it keeps kids from just sort of hanging out and doing nothing. City Manager Ed Augustus recognized Senator Harriet Chandler for her support. Recreation Worcester is a free year-round program for kids between the ages of 7 and 13. Senator Chandler worked with the state to get the necessary funding. She says it benefits both kids and their parents. I think getting them involved and getting and making sure they're safe when parents, so many parents work, uh, makes a huge difference. The program is in its fifth year. More than 1,800 kids are split between 10 parks throughout the city. Augustus says Senator Chandler's work with the state has helped expand what they can do. Funding is necessary to hire the staff, to pay for the supplies, uh, to get the food. Uh, so it's that partnership between the state and the city. Without Senator Chandler, there would be a lot of kids who wouldn't have the great program this summer that they have. Raquel Castro Corazzini is the director of the Division of Youth Opportunities. She says state support has allowed the city to design a new program for kids once they become teenagers. That's a really big deal for that population that is too young to work, um, but too old to be in the program. Where do they go um, between the ages of the 13, 14? Um, and so we've been able to do something that's called a counselor and training program um, that allows them to continue participating. You'll see them walking around um, in orange shirts. They get to be leaders in the program that they were once part of. And on a beautiful August day like today, this is where I'd like to be. The Division of Youth Opportunities is offering a free transit pass for kids ages 9 to 24. Recreation Worcester says it's a great way for kids to get to camp in the summer. In Worcester, Erin Keating, Worcester News Tonight. State police issue a silver alert for a missing 62-year-old Worcester woman. They are asking for the public's help finding her. She was last seen at the Worcester Health Center on Friday. Police say Mary Montesino disappeared from the health center on Oriole Drive. She is described as a Hispanic woman, 5 feet 6 inches tall, weighing about 200 pounds with gray hair. Montesino was last seen wearing a multicolored flower shirt and green pants. Anyone with information on her whereabouts is asked to call Worcester police. This week marks 26 years since the disappearance of Holly Perenin. The Grafton girl was 10 years old when she went missing. She and her brother had been visiting their grandparents in Sturbridge. Her family says she did not return from a nearby spot and her father immediately reported her missing. Holly's remains were eventually found by hunters in a wooded area in Brimfield in October 1993. Her killer has not been found. 
Paxton police are crediting the work of canine units and new technology in helping them track down a suspect in a violent traffic stop. One of their police officers was injured when they stopped a man who had a loaded firearm. Police say the man resisted arrests. Canine units from Rutland and Worcester helped officers find the loaded 9mm handgun. Paxton police used the canines and their infrared camera technology to find the suspect. The injured officer was treated and is okay. A $12 million federal grant will help Clark University head a multi-state consortium. It will train thousands of unemployed and underemployed workers for information technology jobs. The grant will be divided among more than a dozen colleges and universities, as well as workforce development organizations. The goal is to provide IT-related apprenticeships for at least 5,000 people in eight states over the next four years. We're looking to scale the apprenticeship model across the United States to really solve uh, one of the vexing um, uh, talent development issues within our industry and workforce. And Clark worked with partners across the state to develop the group. The school says they will oversee it. The Tripoli virus is detected in mosquitoes in East Brookfield. Residents are being advised to take precautions. The state's Department of Public Health says Triple E is a rare but serious illness spread by the bite of an infected mosquito. They say it can infect people of almost all ages, but there are, they are more at risk of serious illness for children under age 15 and adults over 50 years of age. The East Brookfield Board of Health is working with the State Department of Public Health to determine the extent of the infected mosquitoes. A water main break shuts down a portion of Herman Street in Worcester. The city's DPW says the break happened around 2.45 Monday. The break is in a 12-inch diameter main and is still being repaired today. It was installed in 1918. The city says the break caused widespread rusty water to customers. You are advised to check your cold water taps for discoloration from rust. The water does remain safe to use.